in that case, a pur purple heart. This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> It, yeah, in that case, she is a good woman. Yeah. <laughs> Not a so hard a gold medal. We'll give her something. Yeah. yeah. Just, well, whenever I do weird things, I just go, honey, divergent thinking. It's yeah. just, trust me. <laughs> just play along. This is totally normal. It's totally normal. <laughs> Be normal for you. Normal for Kevin. Kevin's normal. Exactly. exactly. Kevin's normal? <laughs> okay okay this is not the kevin this is not the kevin show let 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 the introvert who runs the department step in and <laughs> kick us off here all right so so david let's go ahead and pull that slide down and uh in that way i can see all these bright shiny people wow what a terrific group this is it's so nice to have so many different populations from our community here. Uh, I know the tiger dogs have a heavy representation and yes, of course, we're here to celebrate the tiger dogs, but everyone else as well from other cohorts uh, from the distant past in our distance program, as well as our campus-based students. Uh, I know many of you will be participating in commencement tomorrow on campus, a great tradition at Buffalo State for now over 125, no, 150 years because we had our 150th celebration. So my name is Dr. Gerard Puccio. No, my name's not doctor. My name is Gerard Puccio. I am a doctor um, and a SUNY Distinguished Professor and Department Chair of the Center for Applied Imagination now um, over 25 years. And as Dr. Sue Keller Mathers, I'm not used to calling my colleagues by their titles. Sue mentioned when we kicked off, um, this digital virtual reception is fairly new. Um, we have been running our distance program for over 20 years. We've been doing a reception on campus for, oh, it must be now 20, 25 years. And then COVID hit a few years back and suddenly, we found ourselves in April saying, but we're planning this reception. Wait, we've been doing all this teaching online. Let's use the technology. And what do you know? It ended up being just a wonderful celebration. And because the uh, ability to use Zoom breaks down geographical and time zone barriers, we're able to now involve uh, students and families from around the world. So. Welcome to our 2023 commencement reception. We have two goals for this reception. One, of course, the primary goal, right? To celebrate the graduates. They've worked hard to get to this point. This is quite uh, an accomplishment, right? A, uh, a degree or a certificate in creativity and change leadership. So lots of hours of hard work, maybe some tears here and there. So let's take a moment as part of an important ritual to celebrate our graduates. Second is to orient, if you will, family members and loved ones, those who have surrounded our students and showered them with love and support as they've made their way through the graduate program. Uh, so part of this is to recognize loved ones who've supported uh, students, our, our, our fabulous students, and to give a little bit of an insight into this, this place, the Center for Applied Imagination. And so with that, uh, there's no better way than to go to the origin story of our department and a whiteboard animation that was uh, put together a number of years ago as part of uh, one of the things academics are not really good at doing is marketing or branding. Uh, we are not very good at telling a story in a really interesting way. So we worked with um, Matej Schwartz, who's not with us today, he's an adjunct faculty member. Some of you may have had a course with Matej. He then worked with a production crew and you will hear Dr. Roger Firestein's voice who narrates the short whiteboard animation that gives you a sense as to the origin to our pioneering department. And so with that, I turn it over to Dr. David Yates. Today, probably more than ever, 
Organizations and scholars all over the world recognize creative thinking as the essential life skill for the future. Creativity is now in every part of our lives. But where did it all start? About 70 years ago, the study of creativity became the central occupation of one single man, a visionary, Alex Osborne. The O in the advertising agency BBDO was looking for creative thinkers in his future advertising executives. Those creative thinkers were very hard to find, mainly because people had never been trained in creative thinking before. Thus, Alex Osborne set on a quest to help people develop their creative thinking. He first designed the now famous brainstorming technique, which helped, but it wasn't enough. Just a tool wasn't going to help people become more creative, so he also invented a process for deliberate creativity. After the publication of Alex's book, Applied Imagination, the interest in creativity became so widespread that he decided to host a formal creative problem-solving institute, SIPSI, in Buffalo, New York. Dr. Sidney Parnes at the University of Pittsburgh heard about this institute and only days before it was scheduled to begin, took a chance and drove from Pittsburgh to Buffalo, hoping that he was not too late to enroll. Sid successfully enrolls at the last minute and attends the Creative Problem Solving Institute. As he's driving back home to Pittsburgh, he has to stop the car frequently to write down ideas on how he can apply what he's learned. He then meets Alex Osborne and promises that he will implement what he's learned. The collaboration between the two eventually resulted in the development of the Osborne Parnes Creative Problem Solving Process. Together, they began to move the field forward to infuse creative education into mainstream education. They introduced creativity courses at the University of Buffalo. But they were living in a time when creativity was not considered a serious subject. The courses were limited to the university's non-credit night school program. In 1967, Sid Parnes enlisted the help of his colleague, Dr. Ruth Noller, an esteemed mathematics professor at the University of Buffalo. Together, they set out to validate that creativity could be taught and deliberately nurtured. Together, having relocated to Buffalo State, they built the first academic program in creativity in the history of the world. Though the quest now seemed to be complete, something was missing. The academic world still mocked their view on creativity. They refused to recognize the program as formal education. The final step of their quest seemed impossible. Sid and Ruth had put their hearts into the quest. They felt discouraged and exhausted. But then, suddenly something changed. Bolstered by the success that their students told them about how the program helped change their lives, a new idea was born in their amazing visionary brains. What if they could prove once and for all that creativity could be taught? More determined than ever, they launched the largest scale study ever conducted on the trainability of creative thinking. When they were done, the Creative Studies Project proved beyond any doubt that training in creativity impacted people in more positive ways than any of them could imagine. People were changing their lives and changing the world. The academic world now had to accept this evidence, and Buffalo State approved the center's undergraduate and master's program. Since then, the International Center for Studies in Creativity has been in the hands of great people, continuing to research, teach, and develop creativity and creative thinking, not just in the United States, but around the world. Every day for the past 50 years, the International Center for Studies in Creativity has continued its never-ending quest of igniting creativity around the world. My name is Roger Firestein and I feel honored to have been a part of this journey for 40 years. The journey continues. Let's meet in class. I just love that video. I, I, I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope it gives you a little bit of a sense for this place where your loved ones have been studying. And yes, I do recognize the fact that I have referred to this center as the Center for Applied Imagination. We are a center for change. So every 20 years or so, just to confuse people, we change our name. And we changed it about two years ago from International Center for Studies and Creativity, which just rolls off the tongue to the Center for Applied Imagination. So I wanted to share the history of the department to perhaps bring a little bit of 
a sense of gravitas to the credential or the degree that's being earned by the student. It's not an exaggeration to say that Buffalo State University is the epicenter for the worldwide movement in creative education. Brainstorming was born here in Buffalo, just like the pacemaker and chicken wings, which were also born in Buffalo, been disseminated all around the world. So too was the creativity movement. And now when we look 50 some years later, creativity has really come out of the shadows. The criticism, the challenges that Alex Osborne, Sid Parnes, Ruth Noller faced, we no longer face. Creativity is widely recognized and creative thinking and creative problem solving is widely recognized as 21st century skills. Tim Cook recently interviewed for Fortune Magazine said the number one professional skill for success today in 2023 is creativity. We'd like to think that maybe we help to contribute to this discussion, but I think perhaps it's more the recognition that in a fast changing world, in a world where we're hit with pandemics and climate change and real social change issues, in order to be successful, one has to be a creative thinker. In order to be a contributor, one needs to be a creative leader. And that's what your loved ones have been studying, is this essential life skill, this survival skill. And so, we always start our reception with the highest award that the department can give, an award that I hope many of you will be candidates for in the future, and that is the Creative Studies Alumni Achievement Award. This is a lifetime achievement award that is given to a graduate of the program who has gone out and contributed to spreading the word of creativity, has gone out and deliberately apply creativity in their communities, in their organizations, uh, and perhaps have impacted numerous lives. And so I'm going to introduce to you Gary Gorski, who uh, I was sort of totaling it up in my mind as I was getting ready for the reception. Gary helped to initiate the Creative Studies uh, uh, Alumni Achievement Award many years ago. Uh, I'm not going to say the number of years because uh, it's a big number, but I will say it was more than four decades ago. Oops, that still sounds like it was a long time ago. But Gary, over more than four decades, has single-handedly kept the Creative Studies Alumni Achievement Award alive. We now, because there have been, given that history, uh, uh, a, a large number of recipients, we now have past recipients create, just so you know a bit about the process, a committee that reviews the full list of graduates, and then they make a recommendation to the department, the faculty then reviews their short list and selects from that short list. So this is an award that is given by peers and recognized by the faculty, but the man who's been facilitating the award for these many years is Gary Gorski, and I turn the microphone over to Gary. Thank you very much, Gerard. Um, I'm honored to be here once again to do this. And a uh, little bit of the history, we'll start with uh, the award. Uh, first time it was awarded was in 1984. And I'm gonna bring up uh, our plaque that we used. And uh, let's see if I can get my sharing screen going here because I seem to have, okay. So I gotta get on the share here. All right, so we see that our first name there was Ed Zillowitz. Uh, he was a student and later on became an instructor within the department. And I'd like to also say that during the earlier years of the award, it was given to graduate students at the time, not people who had already completed the program because we thought they had particular potential to go on and do wonderful things in the world of creativity, leadership, creative studies and such. So I'll just highlight a few things here, people I know. Uh, third one that won, well, we have him right here, Mr. Puccio, uh, mm -hmm. giving uh, 
the Department of Wonderful Leadership role here. And then uh, Mike Fox, who was a um, instructor for many, many years within the department, uh, recently retired, always taught uh, undergraduate students, did a fantastic job. I'm still friends with Mike and his wife. Go over and visit them. Finally, another name that you're seeing here, Susan Keller, Mathers now. So, and uh, she was our fifth recipient there. And then we're gonna go on to other people who I know what they might be doing these days. So Andrew Dutcher is working in uh, graphic arts and doing other things around town. He's living in West Seneca. Uh, Bob Hookey was a graphic arts and film person from one of the universities in Canada. I can't remember what that was now. Uh, Rush Schoen lives in Chicago area and uh, is married, has two children and doing uh, facilitation and training out there. Uh, Russ Wheeler is in Atlanta and also doing training and facilitation out that way. I'm gonna move on to our next slide here. Hopefully, there we go. All right, uh, Cin Cynthia Argona, uh, Cindy Argona, and now she is also Cindy Burnett. So uh, she is, let's see if I can uh, find my notes here on that. Uh, <clears throat> well, she's involved with a lot of uh, younger children teaching and people who teach children, very involved in the education, has her own podcast and things for that. Uh, Diane Steele, it's unfortunate you can't see what Diane did, but she painted some wonderful stuff in the hallways and rooms up and up in the halls in the department. It was just great. Unfortunately, I don't think the college approved of it and then they had to paint it over. Uh, Kristen Daly, she's now uh, Kristen Fields uh, and she did a lot of work with the distance student program. And she is now the director of continuing education at Buffalo State University. So she's done very well in there and still going strong. Uh, Hector Ramos, is now living in Texas. He's a PhD. He's president of the American Creativity Association down there. He's currently a faculty member of Texas A&M University in Bryan, Texas. Um, let's see, who else do I know? Jennifer Haggerty is living in Binghamton, New York. Uh, she was the president of our alumni group many years ago. Uh, Nathan Schwegler is a trainer for a lot of government uh, programs and is just a great guy. And then the next year was when we changed to giving the award to people who uh, had graduated and set themselves uh, into the world of creativity. Marcy Siegels from Canada, originally from the Toronto area, now living out in Alberta, she developed the World Creativity Day, and now it's a week, and had special recognition by the United Nations for doing that. And uh, she was just a wonderful person. She was my original facilitator when I went to my first SIPSI back in 1980. Okay, I'll say it, 1980. And uh, Clara Kluck uh, is from Mexico. She is a fabulous person, uh, does training and facilitation there. Uh, let's see. Laura Barbero Switalski is part of Darwin Associates, along with her husband, who is over here on the next column, which is Tim Switalski. And uh, Laura also does a lot of work with the CREA conference in Italy over in Europe and uh, does a lot of great stuff there. Blair Miller worked with Roger and uh, has his own creativity company now too and is part of Foresight, the uh, measurement tool for creativity. Along with uh, Jonathan Bihar, they were both partners with Roger and his company for a while. Andy Burnett, uh, a Brit who is now, as I said, married to Cindy Aracona, a uh, wonderful person. I'm not sure what he's doing these days. Sarah Thurber is married to Blair Miller and also involved with Foresight as a leading partner with it. So then we get on to Tim, which I've already mentioned, and uh, Bronco Brokman is over, I think he's Dutch and involved with Korea over there. And then I've got several names of people who are going to be going on to the next plaque, which we don't have yet. 
let me just go back and do this so we see both of the plaques together here. But in uh, 2020, Dorte Nielsen, who is from Copenhagen, Denmark, she's an author, uh, writer, presenter, trainer, speaker, founder of the Center for Creative Thinking in Copenhagen. In 2021, we had Ismet Manoon, who is known as Izzy, and she was very involved with the department while she was over here working through with that. She's a facilitator, an inspirational role model, and a culture coach. And then finally last year, we had Dr. John Cabra, who had been with the department for many years. I knew John when he was going through his uh, graduate classes and then, and then he got his PhD and has been working with the department, recently retired. So that's there, and this leads us to our uh, person for this year, which is Dr. Roger Firestein, who you just heard giving the, uh, the speech there uh, a little while ago. I've known Roger ever since I took those first courses in 1980. Uh, we've had a lot of good times together. Roger plays guitar, I play bass, we've played in bands together. Uh, we started going out to parties with fellow students way back in the 1980s. Uh, I've been with him, meeting his wife, girlfriends, daughters, and uh, he's in Cincinnati now, uh, actually Covington, well, with his daughter who's getting married tomorrow. And she recently graduated from medical school. So she's a doctor doctor now. So. Uh, and I have uh, a little Roger's introduction, which he gave to us. So I'm gonna read that for you now. Uh, Dr. Roger Firestein has presented programs in creativity to over 600 organizations nationally and internationally, ranging from major Fortune 500 corporations, government agencies, universities, associations, and churches. Dr. Firestein is an associate professor and senior faculty, retired, at the Center for Applied Imagination at Buffalo State University and president of Innovation Resources. I used to work for him in that company. Uh, he, he guest lectures at the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences at the University of Buffalo. Roger is the author of six books, including Leading on the Creative Edge and Why Didn't I Think of That? His latest book called Create in a Flash a teacher, a leader's recipe for breakthrough innovation is scheduled to be released this July. His expert views on creativity have been reported in Fast Company, Forbes, Investors Business Daily, Inc. Magazine, and the New York Times. His nine part video series on innovation is on the Open Sesame eLine learning platform. Dr. Firestein's, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Firestein's seventh book, Solve the Real Problem, is scheduled to be released this July. Uh, so that does it for that introduction. Gerard, I turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for uh, organizing this award. I also want to thank the committee. Um, typically, um, we have uh, this policy that full-time faculty are not eligible to receive the award, Roger, was, uh, well, there was a full-throated endorsement on the part of the committee that that policy should not apply to part-time faculty, and so we thought that was a very appropriate and wise observation. Our Alumni Achievement Award winner is always our reception speaker, and so Roger prepared a video to have us share with you all. And David, if you don't mind queuing that up so that we can hear our commencement reception speaker, Dr. Roger Firestein. Thank you, Gary. I apologize for not being here to be able to speak to you in person. Right about now, I'll be rehearsing walking my daughter Maria down the aisle for her wedding tomorrow, May 20th. I'm deeply honored to be receiving the Creative Studies Alumni Foundation Achievement Award and thank you so very much. I'd like to address three things in our time together. I'd like to address the genesis of the award. I'd like to address the parents and the significant others and the partners of the students who are graduating. 
And then I'd like to address the graduates. First, the genesis of this award. Back in 1982, another graduate of the program and I, named Diane Fukar Saki, started an innovation consulting company. It was called Multiple Resource Associates. And we needed a typewriter. And as most new businesses do, we didn't have the money to afford a typewriter. And so we got a loan for $500 from Gary Gorski to buy a beautiful, brand new, wonderful typewriter. And when it came time to repay the loan, Gary said, well, let's not pay it to me. Let's pay it to the center and let's create some sort of foundation or some sort of award for this. So a loan for a typewriter in 1982 is the genesis for this award. The first award was given in 1984, and now some 39 years later, I'm honored to receive this award. I'm eligible to receive this award now because I'm retired, and I'm a proud alumnus of this program. And it's been my honor to teach most of the previous award recipients. So that's how this all started. I'd like to address the parents, the partners, and the significant others of the students who are graduating. I'd like to first thank you for your patience and for your understanding and your care when your significant others said, I want to do a degree in creativity and change leadership at this place called the Center for Applied Imagination. Now, I can imagine you're a bit baffled, if not really concerned, what in the world are you going to do with a degree in creativity and change leadership? Have you thought of something more defined like an accountant or a lawyer or an engineer or even a piano tuner? At least we can explain that to someone about what you do. Perhaps if I share my story, that would help. Now, I grew up on a farm in northern Colorado, and in 1976, I was attending the University of Northern Colorado as a music major. I was teaching guitar lessons, and to pay for college, one of the things that I noticed as I was teaching these guitar lessons, that my guitar students often got bored when they were learning their fundamental musical techniques. So I figured that if I got them a little creative, or they, if they could get a little creative, if they learned how to be creative, they'd enjoy their lessons more. And so I began to study creativity, and I began to buy books on creativity. And I think I kept the special order section of the University of Northern Colorado Bookstore in business in the summer of 1976, buying special order books on creativity. As I was reading these books and looking through the bibliographies, there were two names and one place that came up consistently in the literature. Those two names were Sidney J. Parnes and Ruth B. Noller, and this place called the Interdisciplinary Center for Creative Studies at the State University College in Buffalo, New York. In April of 1977, I got the courage to call the center. And by the way, the phone number is still the same. I was staying at my parents' house on our farm in Northern Colorado at that time. And that April morning, I dialed the phone in our basement. Yes, I dialed the phone, all right? Now, the secretary, Jenny, answered the phone. When I explained my interest, she said, well, Dr. Parnes is here. Would you like to talk to him? Now, I had never spoken to an author before in my life. Now, I'm 21 years old. All the authors that I've ever heard of are dead. I never imagined, to think, I never imagined talking to somebody like the creativity rock star, Sid Parnes. I had a great conversation with Sid. He told me that they had this annual creative problem solving institute known as SIPSI that some of you have attended. And they just started this master's degree program in creative studies. I hung up the phone. I ran up the stairs. I was so excited. I was shaking. And I said to my mom, I said, Mom, I just talked to Sid Parnes in Buffalo, New York. Do you know what she said? She said, what? You just made a long distance phone call? Long distance phone calls were pretty expensive from rural Colorado back in the 1970s. In June of 1977, I flew out to Buffalo. I attended the Creative Problem Solving Institute. I took a class in the master's degree program, and I was on fire. When I came back to Colorado, my mom said that all you could talk about was your experience in Buffalo and your experiences with creative problem solving. I finished my undergraduate degree from the University of Northern Colorado in 1977. And in 1978, I packed up my 1973 Ford Maverick and drove across the country to study creativity here at the then Interdisciplinary Center for Creative Studies. I earned my master's degree in 1979, and I believe I was the seventh person to get the degree. I wrote my thesis on a typewriter. 
We've now graduated over 800 individuals, including you, with Masters of Science degrees in Creativity and Change Leadership. I remember, to talk, I remember talking to my mom as I was getting ready to leave that early summer of 1978. And I said, Mom, I don't know if I'm ever going to make any money doing this, but I sure do love it. And as the years have gone by and I've continued to love this field, it has taken very good care of me. As I mentioned earlier, you may have wondered when your loved one decided to do a degree in creativity and change leadership, what kind of job are they going to get from that? Where are they going to go to work? This is not like a degree in accounting or engineering or finance or law. In those fields, the professions are pretty well defined. When you get a degree in creativity and change leadership, the profession is not well defined because it is you who defines it. It is you who reaches into the depth of your soul and decides how you are going to manifest the gifts that you've been given and the knowledge that you have received. You get to design your work and your life. It's not easy, but it's worth every moment. So dear loved ones of those who are graduating, don't worry about your loved ones making a living because they will. And a wise professor of mine, Dr. James A. Warner at the University of Northern Colorado once told me that he said, when you love what you do, the money will follow. And that's been my experience. Let me address the graduates. Graduates, you will make your way in whatever aspect of the world you choose because you have amazing skills that most people do not have. Here's the bottom line. You think differently than most people in the world. You seek out problems instead of avoiding them because you have the tools to identify them. You're not afraid to fail because if your first few ideas don't work, you know how to generate hundreds of more ideas. You look at what's good about an idea or a situation. And if there's a concern or an obstacle, you've learned to overcome that obstacle. You know how to put your ideas into action. You know how to make detailed plans and execute them. You know how to establish an environment for creativity in any organization because you have experienced that environment for creativity here in your studies. You're also credentialed. And like other folks who label themselves as creativity consultants or innovation thought leaders, you have earned the credential and you have the research background to back it up. So don't be impressed by those self-proclaimed thought leaders or self-proclaimed experts. Let no one back you down. Some people have called learning the creative problem solving process and being able to be deliberately access their creativity as a superpower. And that could be. But because you have this superpower, you have a mission. You have a mission to help others think differently. You have a mission to take on the serious and dangerous problems that we have in this world because you have the tools to do this. You can create your future and you can help to create the future of others in this world. So let me leave you with my vision that's guided me in my work for over 40 years. My mission, my goal, my vision has one, to make creativity simple, two, to make creativity practical, three, to help people apply creativity in their world. I challenge you to set your vision, set your course. Don't worry if you don't know how to get there. That's the joy of the journey. Just don't sell yourself short. Create that compelling vision for your future that will drive you forward, that will pull you forward to make it through those challenging and tough times. And there will be challenging and tough times. I am deeply honored to be able to speak to you today as a recipient of this award. It is a testament for the love that I have for this work, for the love I have for you people, and for the love I hope that this work can bring to the world. Graduates, Go out and change the world because you have a responsibility and you are creative. Thank you. Wow, that was fabulous. That was fabulous. Wow, you could hear the passion 
of Dr. Roger Firestein for this field and for you all as members of this community. I gotta say, I'm blown away. That was the first time I had seen that recording. Roger was challenged to deliver a, uh, a, a motivating speech, one that came from the heart and he delivered. I invite you to drop into the chat box feedback for Roger because the chat box and all the comments will be saved and downloaded. So if you have any uh, special thanks or message you'd like to share with Roger, I invite you to go ahead and put that into the chat box. So Roger did a great job recognizing and shining a light on our students. We will continue with that theme now and shift into it's award ceremony time. And so we have three awards that we give away in our department. I will share the names of the recipients of our first award. Our first award is named in honor of our two founding faculty members. You heard them in the animation. You heard Roger refer to both as well, Sydney Parnes and Ruth Noller. And before, uh, Sid and Ruth had uh, left this earth, we spoke to both and, and mentioned that we wanted to start an endowed scholarship in their name. Uh, and they were very clear in establishing what they wanted the focus to be. They wanted to knowing the challenges financially of graduate education. They wanted to be able to help students uh, ease that burden somewhat, students who showed high potential for becoming change leaders. And so I am pleased to announce that this year, we are giving two $2,000 scholarships to the following students, Adrian Ashdown and Faizan Kazani. Uh, Adrian is uh, from Colorado. Uh, Faizan is from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, I think one thing they both have in common is probably beautiful views of mountains. So I threw in that image as well. I couldn't help it as a creativity professor. I'm like, there's got to be some connection that these two have in common. And I was thinking they must have such beautiful uh, views. So we're proud to uh, uh, acknowledge these two recipients. And with that, we'll move on to the next award, which will be presented by Sue Keller Mathers. All right, so the next award is the Murdoch Creative Spirit Award. And this one is, it's pretty dear and dear to my heart. Mary was a, a very special person who always recognized the gifts in others and a, a broad spectrum of how people operate. She could look at people and find the best ways for them to learn and really appreciate who they were for, for who they were. So the Creative Spirit Award is given to two individuals. Um, and just a little bit more about Mary. She was a graduate student, uh, worked with E. Paul Torrance for her doctorate, and then came to Buffalo State and introduced us all to the Torrance incubation model and uh, ways of teaching and learning that really expanded uh, the, the passion and the desire to continue the learning. So our first recipient, Lachey, is with us today. Um, I add a little something here about a networking queen. Uh, it's been amazing a short time that Lachey has been in our home program and the leadership role she's taking and the way she's connected and networked with other uh, individuals. So and again, because it's a special award, it's it's for people who show that creative spirit, who show the kindness and who show that ability and willingness and desire to really help others and help them rise up as well. So congratulations, Lachey, uh, for demonstrating that creative spirit. Adrian is our second recipient of uh, Vibrate Your Best Energy. That's her mission. She really wants to bring dance, visual arts, yoga, other areas in with the creativity field and make a difference. And she uh, texted me just a little while ago to say, I'm so sorry I'm not there, but my students are having their dance 
um, show. And I really feel like I need to be there for them. And I said, not a problem. That just, sh again, shows that, that creative spirit. So it, um, Adrian Ashdown is our other recipient of the Creativity uh, Creative Spirit Award in honor of Mary Murdoch. So the next award is the Firestein Family Award. And again, because our Dr. Fra By the way, your comments in the chat have already been sent to him. I'm making a pic I'm taking a picture and sending. And he says, Sue, I'm on the way to the rehearsal. I'll read them. I'm like, don't read them in the car. You can wait. So I'll make sure that he gets them in a timely way. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. David Yates who will share with us the Firestein Award video, I believe. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted and excited to present two Firestein Family Creative Achievement Awards this year. The Firestein Family Creative Achievement Award recognizes graduate students in creativity and change leadership who have demonstrated expertise in training other individuals in creative problem solving methods and techniques. A little bit about the award. The award was originally named the Firestein Creative Studies Achievement Award, and I established it in 1999. In 2008, the award was recast to honor my dad, Chuck, who died in a tragic car accident in 2004. My mother, Ruth Firestein, and my sister, Judith Firestein, renamed the award as the Firestein Family Creative Achievement Award. And I'd like you to just spend a moment with dad. He was quite the character and quite a creative man. Major contributors to the award have been my mom, Ruth Firestein, my sister, Judith, and myself. And now I'm delighted to say that we're opening up the award for anyone to contribute to support future leaders and graduates. This year's award winners are Lachea Green and Syra Siddiqui. A little bit about Lachea. Lachea is fighting the war on poverty. Her job is to change the narrative from at risk to at promise learners. She is a master chef, and I can attest to that, fantastic. And her goal is to become a master facilitator, a motivational speaker, and the chairman of a board of a company. Congratulations, Lachey. Cyrus Siddiqui, she's doing facilitation work now in supporting neighborhoods and business revitalization. She's currently delivering a series of creative problem-solving workshops to align stakeholders around the design of a community mural at the historic Niagara Frontier Food Terminal, and I've actually worked there. She's using creative problem solving to develop a grant application for NYSERDA's Community Challenge Corporation and was awarded $10 million in prize funding to support six local grassroots community organizations to develop mobility and infrastructure improvements on Buffalo's east side. Congratulations, Cyrus. And double correct congratulations to you, Syra and Lachey. You're going to be receiving your monetary award and your certificate soon. And I'm pleased and honored to be able to provide these awards to these two amazing people. Go out, do good work. Thank you. Congratulations to all of our scholarship and award winners. We now will recognize all of the students who submitted their information when they registered for this reception. Susan Rizzo, our very skillful admin assistant, who's just a joy to work with, put together the slides for you. And our newest faculty member, Dr. Molly Hollinger, who comes to us from the University of Connecticut by way of um, Miami of Ohio University. Uh, we're pleased to have Molly join our team. Molly has studied with James Kaufman and has crafted for herself, I think a very important area of specialization within the field of creativity. And that is looking at how creativity contributes to well-being. So Molly has agreed to be our commencement reception reader 
warm welcome to Molly, to the reception, and to joining our team. Over to Molly. Thanks, Gerard, uh, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, so normally this is this is Roger's role, um, and I don't have quite the voice of Roger, but I will <laughs> do my best. I've been practicing my my Roger impression. Um, so I'm I'm very honored to uh, introduce our graduates. Um, and uh, the, the real stars of this evening. So first we have uh, Kevin Molesworth, who uh, earned his master's degree in creativity and change leadership. He's from North Carolina and is part of the distance program with the Tiger Dogs. Um, and we also asked each graduate if they would tell us their um, biggest takeaway from the program. Uh, we should have known based on, <laughs> based on our students that we would get more than one um, um, from uh, most students. Um, but Kevin, I commend you for, for keeping it uh, to just one. So you said, I have found a community of creative individuals and I see a viable career path as a facilitator uh, ahead of me. And then we have Lachey and congratulations again on the scholarships, well-deserved. Um, so she also earned her master's in creativity and change leadership um, and also an advanced graduate certificate in creativity and change leadership. She is local, so from the Buffalo area um, and her biggest takeaways were um, creating change in the community um, and also applying uh, the learning to her work and uh, also the mastering the skills of creative problem solving as well. And then we have Ryan. So Ryan uh, again earned his master's and uh, micro credentials in applied creative thinking and creative education. He comes uh, from uh, comes to us uh, from a distance um, from Colorado, um, and his big takeaways were um, learning about the power of exploring possibilities and change, um, and that influenced the way he approached all aspects of of life. So that's really amazing. Um, and also the program increased his understanding of the far reaching power of creativity to impact any person or organization, uh, no matter their personal background or professional fields. So congratulations, Ryan. And then we have Tahira, who I believe is uh, in Germany this morning uh, or today. I, I received an email from her at, uh, at like five in the morning and I was thinking, what are you doing up at this hour? Um, and uh, so she is always uh, moving from place to place around the world. Um, and uh, she also, congratulations on earning your master's degree. She's from British Columbia, Canada, um, and also part of the distance program and the Tiger Dog cohort. Um, her biggest takeaways were uh, designing event spaces that support creativity. Um, so she is uh, a very prominent um, person in the uh, event planning world um, and also learning about um, how to help more people um, move forward faster. Congratulations to Hira. And then we have Bernie. So congratulations, Bernie, on your master's in creativity and change leadership and also your certificates as well and micro credentials. She is also from Canada and uh, a distance learner in the Tiger Dogs cohort um, and uh, gave a few big takeaways. Um, so first of all, encouraging students to create unique and novel designs. 
um, and looking for different ways to express herself in creative ways. Um, and also the uh, Torrance incubation model was a big takeaway as well, um, and applying the creativity skills in ways that benefited her both personally and professionally. Next, we have uh, Faizan Kazani. Congratulations on your scholarship, um, as well as your degree. Um, Faizan is also from Canada. And um, some of his big takeaways were, um, he said, I envisioned to share the knowledge of how creativity with the world, um, of how to share the knowledge of creativity with the world and to teach how um, we might live in a positive, a positive life using the power of creativity. I love that. Um, I want to make the term creative well-being without which we cannot imagine living wonderful. Um, and he also said this degree in education is making me more curious and more eager to learn and keep learning for life. Um, I think that's a theme among many of our graduates um, uh, that they are lifelong learners. Um, so congratulations, Spaisan. And then we have um, Cyrus Siddiqui, um, who earned her MS in multi multidisciplinary studies, excuse me, um, and an advanced graduate certificate in creativity and change leadership. And she's from New York. Um, and some of her big takeaways were, she said, I am a melting pot of my past experiences and this degree helps bring it all together. Wow. I have become more confident, more self-aware, more understanding of others. I am now moving forward in life to beat to the beat of my own drum and owning it. Thanks to all of the skills I've developed in this program. <laughs> Very well said and congratulations to Syra. And then we have Samantha. So wonderful to see you, Samantha, and your uh, sister. Um, so Samantha earned her master's in creativity and change leadership, um, also part of the distance program. And her big takeaway was that she has a much stronger sense of self-awareness that enables her to lean into her strengths. Congratulations, Samantha. And then we have Lakshmi um, Sithambaram, and uh, she earned her master's in creativity and change leadership as well, and also um, a certificate and micro-credential. Um, she's living in uh, Seattle in the USA, and um, her biggest takeaway was um, that this journey has been life-changing and has helped me change my entire perspective of how I want to approach life. Wow, it doesn't get much better than that. So, so congratulations, Lakshmi. Welcome to the family. And Mingi Wong. Um, we have Mingi here today. Um, so congratulations, Mingi, on your master's. She is from the Buffalo area now, but um, previously from um, Los Angeles and Hong Kong. Um, she is a home student, and her biggest takeaway for this program was applying creativity and also um, uh, becoming part of our community and networking. And we're so happy to have you as part of our community. And then we have Megan. Um, so I don't think Megan is here, um, but we want to celebrate her. Of course, she earned her master's in creativity and change leadership, but also my group credential as well. She is local. And um, her biggest takeaway was learning about teacher bias, leadership, creative schools, creative tools and strategies. So she is um, a teacher. Um, and uh, she said she believes that with all of this information, I've been able to grow as a teacher so that I may provide the best education possible for my students. I have also begun to think outside of the classroom setting in order to have a profound positive effect on the way education is presented through curriculum. 
I aim to encourage my students to become lifelong learners and productive members of society, providing them with creative knowledge in order to thrive in an ever-changing, ever-evolving world. Uh, so let's give a big congratulations to Megan. And then we have Gregory, which um, this is a <laughs> wonderful picture. Um, he earned his master's in creativity and change leadership, and he is also local. Um, his biggest takeaway that was that creativity is not something you were born with or without, um, but rather it is a skill that can be facilitated and learned. Well said, Greg. Um, creativity is omnipresent, um, and creativity training has reminded me to look at the world around us with wonder and curiosity. Congratulations. And then we have Shannon. I love the hat. <laughs> um, so uh, she earned her uh, master's in creativity and change leadership and comes to us from Florida. And her biggest takeaways were um, becoming, uh, actually being hired as a creativity director at a creative agency where I can use the skills and knowledge I've gained in this program. Congratulations. Um, and she said the credential is wonderful, but the people I met in the cohort have been the most impactful aspect of this program. I've made friends who have already shaped my life more than I ever expected, and I'm so thankful. That's really wonderful. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, and then we have Janine Carlisle. So she uh, also earned her master's degree and also is coming to us from Florida. Um, she said that she's already used um, what she's learned from the degree personally and is starting to incorporate it professionally. I plan to use my education to enhance my professional skills and offer clients ways to view themselves as creative individuals who are able to solve problems, gain new perspectives, and attain goals. And Taylor could not be with us this evening, um, but she also earned her um, master's in creativity and changed leadership um, and is from the Western New York area. And oh, this is a really <laughs> wonderful uh, sentiment. So Anne is uh, not a graduate, but um, a member of the Tiger Dogs cohort. And she wanted to um, express her support of her fellow Tiger Dogs and say that she was here cheering you on. Um, and uh, that the rest of us will be graduating next year. And I just wanted to show my support for them. And did you want to say a few words? Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that photo was going to be shown. That's so funny. Um, yes, no, I just, um, I, I echo everyone and I'm so happy to be here to support everyone. It was, uh, it's just amazing to see your growth and I've learned so much from all of you and, um, I'm looking forward to graduating next year, but um, yeah, I've learned so much from everyone. So congrats, I'm very thrilled for you. Thank you, Anne. Um, so with that, I will just conclude saying congratulations to all of the graduates and also congratulations to all of those family members who have um, stuck in there while um, supporting uh, these graduates. Um, uh, that is so crucial, uh, that support. Um, so congratulations to um, both the graduates and their wonderful family members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Molly. Uh, before we conclude, let me just check to make sure we haven't missed anyone who has completed their advanced graduate certificate or master's degree. I don't, I didn't see yeah. anyone. Jacob. No, no, no. no, I'm still Jacob. not seeing. I'm still not seeing anyone. <laughs> oh, oh, Jacob! Oh, Jacob! Jacob. You're so oh, shy. Hi. I'm still here from the other side of the world. Yes, congratulations, Jacob. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You have been so involved in your studies, and for those who don't know. Uh, Jacob, given the time zone differences, you were often up in the middle of the night, right, or early morning to participate in courses, and you always showed up with so much energy. 
So thank you for that. I'm sure the Tiger Dogs wouldn't be the Tiger Dogs without you. Is there anyone else who was not recognized who completed their degree or certificate? No, okay. Well, Marika, yes, you completed your certificate. I didn't, I just have to say, I did not submit complete the form. So it's no one's mistake that I was not mentioned. <laughs> oh, but we're happy to have you back with us, a uh, member of the Tiger Dogs. So, uh, so thanks for joining us. And uh, again, sharing your energy uh, and commitment to this group. Um, we all are, are very appreciative to see you again. So welcome back. <laughs> Before formally closing, any other individual who needs to be recognized for completing their degree or certificate program? I think we covered it. All right, so here's where I typically go through all of the faculty and I thank each one individually, but instead I've posted it in the chat box. I am very fortunate, 32 years at Buffalo State, 25 years as department chair. I work with an amazing team. I love what I do. And one of the reasons that I love what I do is the fantastic group of individuals I get to work with. So if you feel the same way I do, please drop a thank you note in the chat box to anyone you want to uh, especially call out. And as you do that, I will formally wrap things up let me share a statistic with you, and I think this is, uh, though it may vary as you look around the world, um, when you look at the number of people who hold a master of science degree, and most of you are now in that place where you have a master of science degree, in the U.S., to give you a sense for how rare this is, 14% of the U.S. population hold a master's degree, 14%. The number would be so small, I don't want to even calculate of the number who hold a master of science degree, the number who will hold a degree or advanced certificate in creativity and change leadership. We're a department, we're a center with a big mission of igniting creativity around the world and helping others to facilitate and embrace this life skill. We as a faculty cannot do that alone as Dr. Don Treffinger, one of our former faculty members now past, used to say, you're a student for a short time, but a colleague forever. You're crossing that threshold from student to colleague. You're no longer a student in this community, but you're a colleague and leader in this community. We hope that you stay connected we hope that you step forward and help us to advance this important mission. So that brings our reception to a formal close. Congratulations to everyone. We'll hang out for a little while and go into more of an informal chit chat and conversation for whoever wishes to hang out. Otherwise, feel free to uh, drop out of the meeting. We wish you all the very best. We look forward to those who are going through the commencement ceremony we look forward to seeing you tomorrow and look for me. I won't be easy to miss. I've been asked to be the mace bearer at the nine o'clock commencement ceremony, which is just a great honor. So look forward to seeing you if you happen to be a commencement. Otherwise, thanks for participating in what will become and is an ongoing annual uh, event, this virtual reception. Congratulations to all of our graduates. Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations everyone. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Way to go. So we will open it up to anyone who wants to say, I was, I was about to make an invitation that might perhaps be too open-ended, say whatever mm -hmm. you wish to say. <laughs> Any maybe that's too broad, but anything you'd like to say as a parting message or hello to someone, maybe something that you have gotten out of your experience just by way of example. This is an opportunity to flip your mic on and just go ahead and jump in if you wish. Well, I just want to thank you all for the opportunity to be a part of the family. I want to thank you all for how you imparted in my life and how I will forever take CRS with me and problem solving and creating.
creativity and the way that I learned it over the past 15 months it has been a rewarding experience. And I just know I will continue to grow and cultivate that experience to become a better me. Um, thank you for everyone that had a hand in my um, experience and I cannot wait to address all of my peers in my world and represent CRS. <laughs> You was, know Lachey. Was, was Lachey saying something? I'm picturing. <laughs> <laughs> and she's driving. Yeah. I am. I'm like, I just left. They told me at 12 15 this afternoon they wanted me there at four o'clock to go over the speech. So uh, oh. Lachey, Lachey <laughs> is one of our commencement speakers. She's representing <laughs> the department. So and Lachey, we could hear you. Just teasing you. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Dr. B. <laughs> And you all, Anyone? everyone was so great to work with. Uh, you know, it's bittersweet when you all leave, but you never leave. So that's good. And Ryan's got his hand up. What's no, up, they, Ryan? They, they never leave because we're permanently scarred. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. <laughs> Ryan? I, uh, I see your, I your able digital to hand there. During the... Uh the presentation of our master's projects, but I did want to give a, a special thank you to Dr. Yates for volunteering to take me on as my advisor, because I am a, a, a horrifically difficult student to work with. And this, this semester in particular presented more, more challenges than uh, I could have predicted just with life. So uh, thank you, Dr. Yates, for taking the time and for your immense patience and flexibility as I limped to the finish line, but I, it really meant a lot. Hey, Ryan, is that a warning for this summer? Uh, I hope not. I hope everything <laughs> is stable now. But, you said uh, you're, you're a difficult student to work with. I just wondered. <laughs> yeah, punctuality is not my strongest trait. Uh, mm. I, but I, I'm going to, I am looking forward to what I'm anticipating is a somewhat of a reprieve for, from life this summer. So I think it should be okay. Good. Nice work in the in the master's projects. We had amazing group. If you haven't checked out Digital Commons, this year's uh, is a particularly strong group, and what a pleasure to work with. Mm. So, thank you all. And I don't know, if Ryan, and help Roger. <laughs> Ryan, we were we were we gathered about three thirty, and we were going over the program. And uh, when I came into the Zoom meeting, uh, Dr. Yates uh, and a couple of other faculty were kind of debriefing the semester and you came up and uh, you're exactly right. You don't want to know the things that Dr. Yates said about you. Um, <laughs> it, it's just my ears were burning. No, he he thoroughly, he's maybe too bashful to say it, but he thoroughly enjoyed working with you. And he actually thanked us for giving him the opportunity to work with you. So that should speak volumes to how much uh, he took away from that experience. So I'm glad it worked out so well. Uh, going back to the idea of, you know, becoming part of the family, James would always refer to the, the creativity mafia, he called it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like the Bills mafia, so, the yeah, creativity well, mafia. Yeah, well, the uh, creativity mafia to put it uh, another way. <laughs> the tribe. Hi, everybody. I just want to say hi to everybody and congratulations. And I'm so happy to be here. I was a little late. I was working on a workshop and I'm so happy to see some, um, you know, my students from last summer graduating and uh, some mm -hmm. students I will meet. Ryan, I, we finally meet you, I hope. <laughs> We're giving a second try. Yep, second time's yep. a charm, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, and like me, and so I see several uh, people who are already registered for six fourteen. I I have to go, but I'm so you know happy to be connected with the family, as Lashie, as you say that. And uh, congratulations to everybody. It's uh, amazing to see what you all have accomplished, and you are ready to bring to the world. That was the most important thing. Bye, everybody. Hi, Laura.
This is the quietest this group has ever been. <laughs> I was, you just stole my thinking. You just stole my thoughts. That's the That's longest you know. chunk of wait time ever for this group. Then I would like to say something. Uh, first of all, I would say thank you to all of you to letting me in. And uh, Dr. Puccio, you, you shared some statistics earlier on. Mm -hmm. And the statistics from here is that we are two people in my country who has mm -hmm. taken this yeah. education. And I'm proud to be one of them. Mm -hmm. Dr. Wilson is the other one. Uh, so that's statistics because we're 6 million, but we are only two graduating mm. from this program. And it has been a great honor. Uh, I started collecting books and looking up uh, brainstorming many years ago. And uh, again, your names came up, the program came up, and that was how I was sucked into this family of creativity. Uh, and uh, I have gained some friends uh, across uh, the globe, and that has been a great honor. And I have also worked with some of the uh, students you have in your program on site, and that has been really a great opportunity to learn there. So uh, just a thank you from here. Oh, thank you. Jacob, I hope you'll help us uh, recruit some more people from Denmark. Oh, sure. I'll do my best. <laughs> Love to hear from you. <laughs> Well, it's two powerhouse people in Denmark. You got it. Have you now had a chance to meet Dorta in person? I know uh, you had a conversation with her. I don't think it was in person. It might have been. No, no. Unfortunately, we haven't met for coffee yet, but it's mm -hmm. in books. So we, we, we will do that. Good, sure. good, good. Excellent. Awesome. Hi, guys. <laughs> Can you hear Hi. me? Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm in the car. Um, I just parked so I could speak a little. Um, I just want to give a big thanks for this community. Um, it means so much to me. It really does. Um, as an artist, I always know that, oh, I'm creative, but um, this program and all the learning make me understand why I am creative and how I could um, communicate better and share the creativity with people that who think they are not creative but they actually can be creative um, I also want to shout out to um, Dr. Sue I know she she left but um, I she was so patient in me and I have never met any advisor who would travel miles to Albany to receive the um, Chancellor Award with me um, she drove us four hours, you know, all the way there. We spent a night, you know, together with, also with Kristen and my, and my, um, my boyfriend, Mike. Um, it was such a, it's beyond, you know, it's beyond just um, a professor and student. It's, I felt like it's a friendship and partnership here. So I really, um, appreciate it and yeah Lachey said it's family and, and thanks for Lachey she always kind of make me laugh somehow I don't know how but <laughs> so yeah thank you so much everyone no, no, well said. yeah I'm not sure whether to like laugh or cry to, to what you're saying but um but it's really been wonderful to get to know you over the the past year and and we feel the, the same way about you and we're, we're so happy to have you as part of our, our community. I'd like to say to people that I live in a bubble, this bubble of creativity, and my goal is to expand the bubble so that it grows and grows and more people get in the bubble. It's not meant to be exclusive. But I don't know many communities, and this is why I think of it as a bubble, because it's so special where um, people just genuinely and with um, great enthusiasm listen to one another and support one another. Um, the spirit of 
deferring judgment and using affirmative judgment and just helping each other to self-actualize, it's pretty, pretty damn special. So whenever we do this event, it reminds me of how special it is. So going forward, one of the things that we're thinking about doing is not waiting for C to happen each year, once a year to come back together. We're talking about doing a series of mini C events. Um, we're kicking around the idea of a one hour uh, sort of lunch, lunch and learn, knowing that the time zones, it could be not lunch somewhere else, um, but a lunch and learn once in September, once in October, uh, once in November, then in February, March, we would have our regular C and then April, another mini C. So we're thinking about creating a series of touch points where faculty share what they're up to or a student shares their master's project. We have so much to share with one another. And I think it's our responsibility as faculty to create more opportunities and we hope alumni, as you transition from being a student to an alumnus of the program and a colleague and friend and part of the mafia, that you'll participate in those, those mini C events. So just be looking for those. Uh, we wanna stay connected. And yes, here, here. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, I would see your note, uh, Ryan, and uh, I don't know if Dr. Pucho has hit this group up yet about mentoring, but we're working on a mentoring program for all of the new students that are coming in. And we think that graduates would be awesome people to do that mentoring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll be reaching out. We piloted a mentoring program uh, with the 635 campus students uh, this semester. It went extremely well um, on both sides. The mentees, of course, gained much from it. And it was reported to me that the mentors gained a lot from it as well. We were discussing it today, uh, Joe, Dr. Miller, and myself. And we're um, toying with the idea of expand, expanding that mentoring program from not just one course, but when students get admitted into the graduate program, they're assigned a mentor and that person stays with them the entire program. And so they process courses and assignments. And to your point, Ryan, uh, for those who are particularly interested in the entrepreneurial side of things, that you know, we team up a mentor with them who has that experience. So I think that's uh, yeah. an idea that we're going to give some serious consideration to. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that's the one missing piece for me now is like I'm in a position where I'm finally gaining enough traction that I have a prospective client for facilitation but mm -hmm. I have the request today to like send over like a menu of options of pricing I don't even know how to, how to evaluate this because mm -hmm. uh, I've always worked for the government so I've been told what I was worth I didn't have to think about it and yeah. uh, you know I don't want to scare anybody away by overvaluing but I don't want to set a precedent for undervaluing myself that then I have to overcome. So uh, that's just that's for me been like the more recent revelation of like I don't know how exactly to do that. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got two people who come to mind, uh, and my, I may be able to think of others. Um, but when you're working with Dr. Miller, you might uh, express interest. Um, in fact, I'm thinking. Tim Swatolsky does coaching and has run a successful business. You have Blair Miller, you have Russ Schoen. Um, those are a number of people who come to mind. My colleagues may be able to think of others, but Ryan, if that's um, something that you are interested in, we could um, see uh, since you're in the tail end of the program rather than the beginning, if there might be someone who'd be willing to coach you around that. So, yeah, I'd be grateful. I'll, I'll send an email. Uh, okay, sounds good. That's, yeah, I'd be very appreciative of that. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I'm going to drop out. Congratulations again, everyone. Uh, lovely, lovely ceremony, lovely reception. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you felt um, uh, duly highlighted as you should be given all the work that you've done. 
congratulations. And I guess based on what Molly shared earlier, welcome to the mafia. Once you're in this family, you can't leave. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.